After two very bad weeks on the campaign trail, after really not being able to catch a break at all, with this week in particular just getting worse and worse and worse day by day, today the Mitt Romney for President campaign did something they have never done with their normally rather interview-shy candidate. It was a wall-to-wall, blanket-the-networks blitz of interviews. Governor Romney talked to ABC, he talked to CBS, he talked to NBC, he talked to CNN, he talked to Fox News, he talked to Emmett... Uh, uh, well, no, actually, Mitt Romney did not talk to MSNBC. But in five hastily called interviews with everybody but MSNBC, Mitt Romney repeated without variation the same thing over and over and over and over and over again today. He left Bain Capital in 1999. He left to run the Olympics. And anybody criticizing him for what Bain did after 1999 should apologize. Mr. Romney said specifically that President Obama should apologize because he, Mitt Romney, was gone from Bain by 1999. In February of 1999, I left Bain Capital. I had no involvement with the management of Bain Capital after February of 1999. I had no role whatsoever in the management of Bain Capital after February of 1999. I had no role whatsoever in the management of Bain Capital after February of 1999. I left in February of 1999, relinquished all management authority and role in Bain Capital after February of 1999. The truth is that I left uh, any role at Bain Capital in February of 99. I will admit that part of me was bummed that I didn't get one of these Mitt Romney interviews today when everybody else got one. But you know, on the other hand, I realize all he would have said to me is, I left Bain Capital in 1999. And I would have said, pardon? And he would have said, I left Bain Capital in 1999. And I would have said, can I change the subject? And he would have said, I left Bain... Here's why this matters, this question of whether or not Mitt Romney left Bain Capital in 1999. The question of Mitt Romney when he was at Bain Capital and when he left, when he really left. It's critical to Mitt Romney's viability as a political candidate that he left Bain Capital in 1999, as he says and says and says and says and says. Mitt Romney's electability depends in part on that being true, which is why he says it all the time. I left that business in 1999 to help put the Salt Lake City Olympics back on track. I worked at one company, Bain, for 25 years, and I left that to go up and off and help uh, save the Olympic Games. I left Massachusetts to go run the Olympics and left my organization. I was out there full time. I left Bain in 1999. I was out there full time. I was here in no time. The Romney campaign should start printing that on shirts and coffee cups and bumper stickers and dog outfits because that statement is central to Governor Romney's campaign. Last year, that assertion appears in very plain English on the form that Mr. Romney had to file to run for president, his financial disclosure form. It's very plain English. It says Mr. Romney retired from Bain Capital on February 11th, 1999 to head the Salt Lake Organizing Committee. Since February 1999, Mitt Romney has not had any active role with any Bain Capital entity and has not been involved in the operations of any Bain Capital entity in any way. You do not have to be a lawyer to know what in any way means. The reason Mr. Romney keeps insisting that he left Bain Capital just a few weeks into 1999 is that he doesn't want to answer for things that Bain Capital did after that. He does not want to answer for the layoffs and the bankruptcy at a company called Dynamic Details. Mr. Romney does not want to answer for the layoffs and the closing of the GST steel mill, where the federal government had to come in and bail out the company's pension fund. He does not want to answer for the bankruptcy of the American Pad and Paper Company, or the way Modus Media and SMTC Corp sent jobs overseas. He doesn't want to answer for the bankruptcy of stage stores. Mr. Romney does not want to answer for any of those things that happened at Bain Capital after he doggone says he left that doggone company. And so now Mitt Romney has a problem, which is twofold. Uh, first fold, reporters have been finding and publishing lots and lots and lots of instances where Mitt Romney shows up in Bain Capital documents as being very much a part of that company after 1999. David Korn at Mother Jones and Josh Marshall at Talking Points Memo have been publishing Bain Capital documents like this one from... After 1999, this went from the year 2000, showing Mitt Romney as the sole shareholder, sole director, chief executive officer, and president of Bain Capital. And here's one from the following year, from 2001, same thing. Bain Capital telling federal authorities that Mitt Romney owns Bain and is the boss. 
The Boston Globe yesterday built on that reporting, finding financial disclosure forms from Mr. Romney that list him as the 100 percent sole owner of Bain Capital in 2002. As these stories have started breaking, as this reporting over the last couple of weeks has started snowballing, the response from Mr. Romney has been that these documents that show his name on them from Bain Capital after 1999, these documents don't matter. These are just legal mumbo jumbo. It's just a quirk of the law. Even though I, Mitt Romney, have signed these documents saying that I, Mitt Romney, am principally engaged in the business of surfing as the, stole, the sole stockholder of the firm, that's just legal stuff. That's just a technicality. I don't really mean it. It's not really true. And if you were a rich investment manager like me, you would understand. Really, you would understand in your heart. Today, Mr. Romney elaborated on his defense by saying that all of these forms, his names being on all these forms, well after 1999, all these forms, what they meant was that he was the owner, but he was not, as the owner, paying attention to these things that he owned. He was not paying attention to anything at Bain. He was not steering anything. He was not going to meetings. He was not making decisions. He was not doing anything at Bain. He was just still owning it. And if that's true, that means that Mr. Romney wants us to believe, look at this, Look, look, look. He wants us to believe that he got paid a lot for doing absolutely nothing. He made $100,000 in 2001 and again in 2002 for the job of doing absolutely nothing at Bain Capital. Nothing at all. That hundred grand salary is not the return from an investment. That's not somebody paying him back a loan. That is Mitt Romney making $100,000 for a job that he insists he did not do. Are there any more of those jobs available out <laughs> there where you get paid a hundred grand to do nothing? To swear that you are doing absolutely nothing? Are these jobs available if your name is not Mitt Romney? No? Maybe? Call me? Well, now Mitt Romney um, has a further problem beyond that. Back when he ran for governor of Massachusetts in 2002, Mr. Romney gave sworn testimony about being a legal resident of Massachusetts and therefore being eligible to run for governor. I lived in Massachusetts at the time, I still do, and I remember people having a little consternation over the fact that this guy who lived in Utah was going to be governor of Massachusetts. But he testified that actually he didn't live in Utah, he still lived in Massachusetts. In his testimony, he said even though he had been busy running the Olympics in Utah, he traveled to Massachusetts all the time for both personal reasons and for business reasons business reasons. He specifically mentioned having to come back for board meetings in 2002, including apparently board meetings for a company that Bain had a stake in. So he swore then that he was coming back to Massachusetts in 2002 to go to board meetings. He says now he was doing nothing, nothing, nothing at all related to Bain after 1999. So Mitt Romney says he was not there at Bain. He also says he was there it all depends on who's asking and why. This year, when Republicans were trying to pick a Republican nominee to run against President Obama, Mr. Romney's opponents in the primary tried to nail him on this. They, they tried to say he should release his tax returns, he should clear up all this stuff. Didn't really go anywhere in the primaries. But you know, the first person who realized that Mitt Romney was struggling with this, that he was trying to create a little cognitive dissonance around this, that he was trying to make people believe two opposite things at the same time, that he wanted to evade responsibility for what happened at his firm while still getting credit for being at his firm then. The first person who realized that, the first somebody who wrestled with that in a campaign against Mitt Romney was his opponent back in that Massachusetts governor's race a decade ago. One of the other companies that you own, Mitt, uh, Ampet Company, it was reported in the Boston Herald uh, just last week that you said, you know, if I had it to do all over again, I would have done things differently when you cut people's health care benefits, cut their pension benefits, and finally close the plant. It has become known that your, your company made $102 million in profits from the sale of that company, from dismantling that company. My question to you is, um, couldn't you have made $80 million instead of $102 million and help keep people on their health care benefits for a little bit longer or extend their pension benefits? At, the off at, the, at the Olympics, these, at the time those things Are occurred. Are you going to answer the question? The well, fact is you were still signing documents as CEO of the company while you were away. And, and as a matter of fact, in, in the, the summer of 2001, when you were leaving the Olympics, you actually made a statement in the paper that in the summer of 2001, 
2001, you were finally relinquishing 100% control of, of your position within Bain. And so apparently Let's, you hadn't relinquished that beforehand. Yeah. Joining us now is Shannon O'Brien, Mitt Romney's Democratic opponent in the 2002 race for Massachusetts governor. Ms. O'Brien is the former Massachusetts state treasurer, former member of both the state House and state Senate. Uh, Shannon O'Brien, it's really nice to have you here. Thank you for being with us. Hi, Rachel. Very nice to meet you and uh, nice to meet a former a, a neighbor from uh, Northampton. <laughs> I lived in East End. Oh, very good. Well, uh, you know, looking back at that debate footage, um, I mean, as the first person to press Mitt Romney in that campaign about what really happened at Bain Capital and when he was responsible for Bain Capital's actions, are you surprised to see it coming up uh, again now? Is this the same basic issue you were confronting him with 10 years ago? Yeah, it's the same basic issue, and he criticized me very deeply for having done something like this, for having deigned to question uh, his truthfulness. And it's taken 10 years to figure out that actually maybe he wasn't telling the truth. Obviously, the Obama campaign uh, has been going after Mr. Romney for the apparent uh, conflicts in the record. I wonder, have you been in, in contact with the Obama campaign? Are they interested in, in what you know? Are they following any of your lead from what you, what you raised with him a decade ago? Well, I certainly think that uh, a lot of the record that uh, was created in 2002, the Obama people are certainly looking at. I mean, I, I, I can't see this from here, but I guess you've had uh, the videotape of one of our earlier debates uh, from 2002. And so I really think that, um, you know, after 10 years, it's really making sure that um, you hold someone accountable for the statements that they make. You know, Governor, former Governor Romney has demonstrated a pattern of basically not being completely transparent uh, about his financial dealings. On the one hand, he says that the reason he should be the president of the United States is because he's a job creator. And the reason we should believe he's a job creator is because of his fantastic track record um, at Bain. But then when pressed about the bankruptcies and the lost jobs, well, then he doesn't want to have anything to do with that. So I think that we were able to uncover quite a bit of that in 2000. 2002, um, and I think that it's just looking at the inconsistencies, not only in 2002, but you know, in his last race and then in this race, um, just making sure that he's being truthful and making sure that he's being consistent um, in the message that he's pressing for making his case to the people uh, in the United States. I have to say, I, I have been marinating in these various documents uh, for a few days now since they've started coming out, trying to figure out uh, what's important, what might really just be legal mumbo jumbo, the way his campaign is pointing out, and it, see, it really sticks out for me that he was being paid $100,000 both in 2001 and 2002 by Bain, not because of an investment, but as a salary for being an executive. And if he is simultaneously claiming that he did nothing, he did absolutely nothing, and that he was paid $100,000 for being an executive, it seems to me like one of these things cannot stand. This, this has to fall apart if only on that point. Is that that detail about him getting paid a hundred grand for each of those years, is, is that new to you? Did you know that at the time? Well, no, I mean, I think that that was part of his uh, statement of financial interest when he was in the campaign. And, and I think that that's one of the reasons that we, we pressed him on this issue in 2002. And, and, and I actually probably believe that, that given the time that he was taking to run uh, the Olympics uh, before he came to run ba back to Massachusetts to run, probably the day to day operations of a business of the size and magnitude of Bain, he probably wasn't doing. But what happens in these private investment companies is that initially, in, in, in essence, when you make an investment, you get seats on the board. And there's a reason that you get seats on the board, because you're basically watching, overseeing the management of these other companies, watching the decisions that they're making, making sure that they're following good corporate governance, and then, in essence, protecting the investment that you've made. I've actually uh, have sat on a, a number of different corporate board, boards, including some uh, financial institutions. And I understand that even if you're not involved in the day to day operations. It's that board work that also becomes very important. So he probably was getting paid for some of that board uh, involvement that he uh, was